Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about relationships and symbiosis. Let's jump in. So in your guided notes today, things are going to be outline style. So you'll see Roman numerals and titles, and then you might see some charts or bullet notes to fill in. Make sure as you see vocab words to highlight those vocab words. They're important, and you want them to pop out at you. The first vocab word we're going to talk about is niche, sometimes pronounced as niche. It's the role an organism plays in the community. Right? For instance, this organism is a beaver. It plays the role of making dams in the community. Habitat is just the place it lives, so maybe it lives by the lake. All right, so two vocab words that mean somewhat similar but different things, making sure we're highlighting them so we can come back to them. So this is some relationships in our ecology unit that we need to know. Now, we also need to know a lot of different major words for types of heterotrophs. Remember, heterotrophs are things that eat other things. So we're going to list out these five things in your notes. These are in the form of a table, all right? So the first thing in your table is herbivore. So it eats only plants, primary consumers. An example is a deer, all right? So in your notes, make sure you're either writing the definition, the example, keywords, all right? Making sure you're filling in your chart. So an example here is a qualifier also. Now we also have carnivores. Notice it has that prefix carny, and this one has the prefix herb that let us know plants. Carny sounds like meat, right? So this one only eats meat or other animals. It is a secondary consumer or a tertiary consumer if we think about our food web. Wolves and lions are this. We are omnivores, meaning we eat both plants and animals. We can be secondary or tertiary consumers. Humans. Other things are pigs or bears. Now then there's scavengers. They don't kill their food. Instead, they eat um, animals that have already died. So these are the things that are like birds of prey. Uh, possum is another example. So if I went too fast, make sure you pause and make sure those key terms that we're learning here are uh, highlighted in your notes that you've jotted down examples or keywords or the definition depending on what was open in the guided notes. Now, there's also one last one, which is our decomposers, which are in charge of breaking down and recycling nutrients. There's three major examples that form the abbreviation FBI. They're fungi, bacteria, and invertebrates. Invertebrates meaning worms or snails. So here's our fungi, mushrooms, worms, and bacteria. Right? Remember, worms are what we meant by invertebrates. Now, here's our last thing. We're going to talk about a new word called symbiosis. This is a big umbrella category of major types of relationships where organisms are living close and permanently together. So, um, sim meaning together, biosis meaning life, right? So that's the breakdown of this big umbrella term. So in our chart in a moment, on our notes, we're going to fill in the different types of symbiosis. In the chart, you either need to write the definition, an example, or the cute little smiley faces that represent that type of symbiosis. So here are different types of symbiosis. All fall under that big umbrella term symbiosis. The first type is parasitism. All right. So for instance, a tick or a mosquito and a human. In those relationships, the mosquito or tick is benefiting, it's getting nutrients, and it's harming the human. We're going to learn another really crazy example in class called the parasitic wasp and caterpillar, where the wasp is really not so nice to the caterpillar. In all these examples, the host that's being harmed does not die, but the parasite is still harming the host. Next, we have commensalism, which is a really weird word to say. Commensalism is when one organism is benefiting, but the other one doesn't care or isn't affected. Here we see these white shell-like things called barnacles. They're actually alive, and they're living permanently on the whale. They get a ride by going and living on the whale, and as they ride through the ocean or sea, they're actually getting benefit of getting extra water passing over them so that they can eat. But the whale is so big, it doesn't care. It's not affected. So we have a happy face and the meh emoticon smiley face that doesn't care. Because the barnacle is benefiting from food, but the whale doesn't care. Mutualism. 
both organisms benefit. Often we talk about pollinators and their plants because the pollinator gets nectar or pollen, which is its food, and the plant gets to pollinate or reproduce, and then it gets more plant babies. So both things are benefiting. We like to remember this as the word mutual, which means both. Last but not least, we have predator prey. The word predator means to eat something else and prey is what it eats. This is when one organism kills another. Here we see a fox eating a rabbit. It could have easily have been a lion and a zebra. So these are our four major categories of symbiosis. If I went too fast, make sure you pause and or go back. We will be practicing these in class. You do need to know examples. The happy smiley faces can sometimes help you understand that. Um, in the notes, sometimes we, for predator prey, use a happy face and a dead face. See you in class.